when you're in the mixer brush, let's get a round. I'm just going to get a hard round. And again, this is just a real standard way of showing this. The mixer brush can, if I take it off of, I'm going to, okay, so I'm going to put it on dry heavy load, which is a preset. And I'm going to go here and I'm going to go. Now, here's the thing. You can't be on load solid colors only or it's going to pick solid colors. Okay. Correct? Okay. Yes. So I just go to dry heavy load. I go a little bit around. Okay, here's the other thing. You can't have sample all layers on or it will sample the background. Yes. So that's got to be off for this purpose. Okay, then I'm going to go to um, alt or option, alt or option on the Mac. So I'm on a Mac now. And you can see it, it captured it up here in the window. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's open up another file. And what it's going to do here, it's going to hold that color information and light the brush stroke that way. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm going to go, if I go here, let's go here. Let's get a more interesting brush. Now you have to get a brush that's not assigned to something already. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if it has the little icon up here and it's already assigned to something, it's probably not going to work. I'm trying to okay. find a good one. Let's find a good one. Let's see what this looks like. You can see what it does, correct? Yes. It actually can be really a useful tool. Even this, I might start like, I don't know. I might start like, I might pick a, I might make a, interesting brush and start using it for like some interesting texture i could probably make a texture brush like that and i could light it and go in and throw in like the basis for my like uh tree trunks or something like that you know what i mean yeah or all kinds of things actually you can still go over here and tweak things just like you would with any brush Okay. Okay. So what we're doing is we're going to do this. You're going to need to go in. You're going to have to do a couple of things. So what we're doing is sort of combining things we've done all along. Okay. Okay. So I have, let me see if this is already loaded. So I made this little bush idea, right? Right. That I just created, and then and then I also made a brush, like a stamp brush, just based on this shape. Okay, so now I've got this. I can go in here, and I can go. And I got this bush shape, correct? Yes. So this isn't really a mixer brush thing. That I just made, you know, as a regular, like we did with our stamp brushes, basically, right? Right. Because I just need the shape. And then I can come in here. Oops. Let's get rid of this. I can come in here. And I'm going to grab, I'm going to go a little smaller. I'm going to go option, grab, it grabbed it. Then I'm going to come in here. And I can start to drop this in. And I'm going to make a big bush right here. Okay. Now I look at it, I go, okay, the lighting, this right here is starting to repeat, which I never want. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come in here now and I'll make a little smaller brush. I'm going to grab some of this dark area. I'm going to go back over here, go to make this brush a little bigger, let's say. And I'm going to kind of adjust the lighting the way I think it looks right. So now it's feeling a little less um, repeated. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, like that. Now, what I, what I was doing in the demo in class is I went in here. I'm going to make another layer. I keep all these on separate layers. And I'm going to go, let's make some water. Oops.
Now, here's another thing that to me starts getting into the power of abstraction a little bit. So let's make a copy of this. Let's put it behind this. I'm going to pull this over. I'm going to go man T. I'm going to hold my shift. I'm going to pull it over. So what I would do now is I'd make a, a, a clear mixer brush to sort of smudge this out a little bit. Okay. I'm not going to do it right now because I'd have to make it. Yeah. So I'll just use this for now, but don't do everything with a mixer brush on this. Okay. Okay. And then I'm going to come in here. I usually, sometimes I do this with an eraser, like a rough eraser. Let's try this. And then I'm going to go to my color. Oops. It's over here. I'm on two screens right now, so it gets funky. And then I'm going to go make this something that makes sense for those hills in the background. Does that make sense? Yes. Now you see how one of the thing reasons I do it this way is that it kind of gives you an example of sort of the power of abstraction with um, with things like organic things. Does that make sense? Yeah, are those are hills in the back? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't read that way, it reads that way to me. Okay. Yeah? Maybe you're creating a reflection or something. You do what? I thought you were creating a reflection because you no, took I'm it from the book. reflection here in a minute. Okay. Now I want to do a whatever you call it layer thing, a layer mask, too much. You see what we're doing? Yes. Now I'd have to dial in the color in here. And that really is gonna depend on the sky color. So let's do this. Oops. Oops. Come on. Starting to make sense? Yeah. Okay, now this would have to get dialed in to the right temperature, this this mountain or this whatever it is. Actually, this needs to be the home. You can go pretty blue with things like this. But what I usually do, <clears throat> and I'll show you here in a second. That's just going a little too. So let's do this. I'm going to hit the colorize button so it stays on the same there. That's better. So it stays in the same family. Does that make sense? Yeah. And then I'm going to get a little more of this. You know, you do this with your, you create a clear smudge brush with your mixer brush. Oops. And then what I like to do, I'm going to trim this off. I don't want this totally clean on the top, obviously, because there'd be foliage and things up there. So that's starting to work kind of nice. You see that? Yes. And then it might, <clears throat> depending on the atmosphere, I might go. Probably a little lighter. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll grab some of this again. I do this with my, oops, I didn't want to do that. Oh, well, let's go back to our regular brush. 
And I'm gonna go to my, just this, cause it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna grab a little of this, this color, cause I should be able, and your mixer brush will work way better for the, what I'm doing right here. Cause you can literally to put it on all layers, put it on a layer above and then mix this color into your hillside and it'll start to warm it up a little. Does that okay. make sense? Yeah. But I'm just going to do it again for time's sake. And see how we can start to build our hills back there? Yeah. Now, another thing I might be able to get away with is let's go and let's put this brush on. Let's go to a. Let's go to here. This now sometimes this doesn't work because it gets too um too dark or too dirty, but I'm gonna try it. I I just need so little of it. I, I'm just gonna do it really simple. So we get a little shadow side on this hill. See how it's starting to work? Yeah. But see how we're just using sort of abstraction to get there? Yes, with the mixer brushes and stuff. But we just took a big shape, squished it, kind of trimmed it a little bit, and you got hills. And what okay. I'm always trying to get through to you guys is that, because I see too much, to be honest, I see too much. Here's a step-by-step -step way to make hills. It's like, now learn how to fucking paint. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so I, if you notice, I'm not doing step-by-step -step trick stuff. This is like, trying to get you to understand like, hey, I can reuse this shape and we're reusing all these shapes to create a scene. But I'm also using paint, the, the power of abstraction and painterly thinking. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I see too much of this. It's, it's Photoshop tricks. Do this, then put this filter, then do this, then apply this thing and then do that. And it's like, okay, well, you're going to get the same result all the time. There's not going to be any personality to it. And you don't really understand how to make imagery. You're just using these step-by-step -step things. Does that make sense? Yes. So hopefully what I've got built in here, I'm hoping you'll sort of come to your own conclusions. You'll sort of go, oh, I get it. I can use that for this, that, and the other. And you'll do your own thing with it. Right? Right. Um, what's the plan with the bush here? Is this kind of like floating? No. We haven't done anything with it yet. Okay. So I probably so still... goal to create this landscape with a bush and that's it? Uh, almost. No, I want a little more. Okay. I need a better, usually what I do with this is I try to, oh, let's try this. Let's apply this, the bush brush I made, because that works really, usually works pretty good. I'll take the same edges. Now, I'm, I would usually spend more time finessing this. I'm doing it quickly. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Wait, let's try. Oops. Too big. Yeah. So I can use the same brush, you know, start erasing with it so it doesn't look so uniform. Then I could create maybe here. Let's go behind, let's go behind this. Uh, let's grab a brown or I'll, I'll tweak it to brown. Okay, let's go here. I'm just gonna grab, I could probably just use the same brush. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could create a little shoreline here. Tweak it down.
I'm going to resample this. Now, <clears throat> what I'd have to do is come in here and <clears throat> where'd it go? And again, that's weird. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. I'd have to add a little bit of, you know, I'd have to come in here and add a little variation to this. Some darks, some lights, some different temperature shifts. As it goes into the water, I'd probably put it a little more. Um, it would shift in tone right there as it hits the water. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so let's go back to here. Let's go back to our mixer brush again. I should be able to go back to here. Grab it. Oops, too big. Yeah, it's fine. Let's go. Get a foreground element going, maybe come in here just for simplicity. Darken it up a little bit. Come in here, grab this, flip it. Get it behind everything. I actually put this on the same layer, which I screwed up. It shouldn't be on the same layer as this, but oh well. Uh, and then let's go again, layer mask. Black and white. Oops. I put the layer mask on the whole way. start to get some reflections. <clears throat> now, here's the other thing you're gonna to wanna to do probably. You're probably gonna to wanna to go, like I might get some of this. Now, this is where your mixer brush will come in really handy. And again, I'm just gonna do it a different way just for speed. But some of this, let's see if I can do this. I might be able to just do it. Let's get a different brush. See what this one does. Don't want that brush. This brush. What I want to create here is I want to create a brush that I can just, which I'm, I have to make, which I don't really feel like taking the time to do. Uh, I'm going to grab, so I'm just going to do it this way, but do it with your mixer brush because you can put sample all layers and you can mix the colors. Does that make sense? Because okay. what yeah, I yeah. probably would do is here with my mixer brush, I put it on sample all layers, which I'm going to put it, I have it on this on the, on the smudge. And I would pull some of this start to go into the water some of this brown because when you when it first pulls in the water you'll see a little bit of that brown going under the water and it'll sort of mix with the water colors that make sense yes sort of what i'm doing here the mixer brush will do it way better that makes sense yeah but we're starting to get that that thing then i'm going to go probably on a layer up here and i'm going to go now here's another thing i'll do that in a second hang on I'm going to go here. One of the key things when you're doing a reflection in the water, find where the ripples are. 
get your light right and put your little ripples right over that reflection and see how it'll really start to sell that idea of a water reflection yes way back here sometimes i'll do it also i might be able to come in here and grab some of this on another layer and again this will be your mixer brush thing will be great because it'll put it on sample all layers and you can get some of the where the water shifts to maybe a green or a brownish tone in the in the foreground or just somewhere okay does that make sense just to break it up all this blue yeah it's starting to work now okay there we go now sometimes i'll go on here and i'll go is there any overlay that sells out a little more might not might but you understand why you want to do it with your mixer brush because then you're sort of like wet into wet painting like with oil right, right. So all the stuff i'm doing where if i use a smudge don't use a smudge use a clean mixer brush you know what I mean? Or, you know, get some color yes. and pull it into the layer underneath and let them mix and that kind of thing. Okay. I want to get a really nice. Um, that's not bad. And then this this reflection, wherever the light, wherever the how the ripple would work, you want to get that over the also this brown. I would vary it. There could probably it could probably go slightly purpley, could go slightly warmer just to vary it to get that dirt idea. I might put a couple of. Uh, uh plants down here along the shoreline i might go here along the shore or along the yeah and i might grab the same maybe a, a pretty light value and right across right there let's go up here too much You know, because when the water hits the thing, sometimes it'll get a little bit of, you know, like a little foamy kind of idea there where it hits the shore. Does that make sense? Yes. It could also get a little um, darker in places. You just want a variation, basically. Okay. So here, maybe I could pull a little bit of the darks in there. See how it's starting to work a little better? Yeah. And for that, we'd use the mixing brush as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I go back and forth. What I'd probably use, yeah, I probably would and just let it mix in there. And then I might clear the mixing brush and just make it like a smudge brush and then mix those colors together however I need to, whatever I need to do. Okay, now here's another thing you, I do sort of towards the end or, you know, somewhere. I made this little leaf brush. So if you see it's one leaf, oops, God damn it. It's not holding my information. Hang on. I forgot to save it. I think I forgot to wait. No, I didn't. Hang on. I think it's right here. Leaf scatter. So that's the same brush. I just made a scatter version of it. It's too big right now. So let's make it smaller. That's not too bad. Maybe just slightly bigger. And I'm just gonna just for let's go, let's put a new layer here. I'm gonna grab this color, but I'm gonna really hot it up a lot. Like maybe it's catching some light. It's a little saturated, but I can adjust that. And this brush, I would spend more time making sure this brush feels a little more random. But okay. sometimes what I do is if I don't feel like doing that, is I'll just go back to my eraser. Just eliminate some of them randomly. So the last phase of this is really just going, I want to get some randomness in the leaves. Now I'm going to go to this darker value. And that way I can pull a couple of these leaf shapes out here where they're breaking the form, which helps me to differentiate these things. Because the real trick here is you want to make sure that these don't look like they're being stamped and repeated which is really easy to do by what we did before. We go grab a different section of the, maybe the shadow section, blow it back up, go back into the thing and break it up a little bit. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, you know, and then I could take, if this was, it's not really situated the right way, but let's just say we took this.
Now I'd have to vary this again because these two shapes are lining up, but I could probably put this back here. Maybe, I'm not sure if this will work. Maybe, why do I have a chat here? Oh, um, Alyssa joined for a short bit. Um, probably go a little lighter, maybe even cool it down a little bit. Probably have to make it a lot smaller. You know, I could start pulling this out back here and getting another bush back there and pushing it back a little bit. That makes sense? Yes. You don't have to do that. I mean, it depends on your composition. I don't, you don't have to follow this exactly. You can do your own composition. I don't care. But you can see, I could just put that back and put some atmosphere on it and create another something back there, right? So maybe the shoreline does that. I'm going to use this as a mask, see if this works. And then I'm going to go maybe take some of this. Put a shape right over it. And see if I can push it back with some of the atmosphere that's actually there. I'm always screwing around with this kind of stuff. So that just differentiated it slightly. I could probably shift this to a blue. Let's see. Oh, that's kind of interesting. That's kind of interesting. Just change it to a little more folly look. You know, but anyway, I could just push it back there and I could start to create this little scene here. That makes sense? Yeah. So you got to do a couple of things. You got to make a brush based on, which is just a regular brush based on this. Then you're going to turn that into a, you know, your 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 sampling tool, right? Right. For your mixer brush, because you have to make this first. Then you need to make a little leaf shape brush that scatters for your for the final part. And I think that's only two things. And then, um, what else? I think that's all you got to make.